In this session, I am going to demonstrate the virtual full backup and zero data loss features of the zero data loss recovery appliance. For this demonstration, I am starting with a database that has been configured to use the recovery appliance, but has not yet been backed up. I will run the first full, technically incremental level zero, backup. I will then run a script to generate some changes in the database, followed by an incremental level one backup. Once that is complete, I will run another script that will add a row to a table that immediately crash the database and remove all the data files, archive log files, online redo log files, and control files. Finally, I will run a script to restore and recover the database and show that the inserted record was recovered, even though no backup was taken after it was inserted. We are starting on the Enterprise Summary page in Enterprise Manager. To schedule the backup, I will first navigate to the database homepage by going to Targets, Databases, and clicking on the link from my database. Once on the database homepage, I will go to Availability, Backup and Recovery, Schedule Backup. I will then select the Oracle suggested recovery appliance backup option. We want to run it one time immediately, so I will just click continue. Here we can review the backup configuration. We can see the location of the libra.so file. This is the library that allows our man to interact with the recovery appliance. We can also see the location of the wallet. This is the file that stores the credential for the VPC user to connect to the recovery appliance. Finally, we can see the connect string for the recovery appliance itself. I will click Submit Job, and I will click View Job to follow its progress. I will turn Auto Refresh on to follow the progress of the backup job. I'm going to pause the recording until the backup completes. We can now see that the backup job has succeeded. I will now run a script to generate some changes in the database. I will navigate to the job library by going to Enterprise Job Library. I will select the Run Workload script for my database and click Submit. Here we can review the job attributes but nothing needs to be changed, so I will just click Submit. I will click on the job link in order to follow along its progress. I will turn on Auto Refresh. This job runs for approximately five minutes. I'm going to pause the recording until the job completes. We can now see that the job completed successfully. We've inserted some data, made some changes, generated some uh, redo logs. Now it's time to run another backup to back up the changes we just made. I will turn auto refresh on to monitor the job's progress. I'm going to pause the recording until the backup completes. We can now see that the backup has succeeded. Now I will run a script to insert a record, then immediately drop the database. I will navigate to the job library and submit the drop database script for my database. Let's review the, the log as it progresses.
So we can see in the log that there were two records in the table from previous runs of, the, of this job. We've now inserted a third record in the table with a current timestamp, 11.37 a.m. The database is now down, and we're removing all of the files from ASM. We can now see that there are no control files, data files, on long, online log files, or archive log files. Now, I will recover the database. I will navigate to the job library and submit the to restore job for my database. I will pause the recording until the recovery is complete, and then we'll, we will review the log file. Okay, the recovery has completed successfully. Let's review the log file to see what happened. The first step was to restore the control file. Once the control file was restored and the database mounted, the data files were restored. Notice the VB dollar designation in the backup piece handle. This indicates that this was a virtual backup that was created on the recovery appliance itself. Our man did not directly send this backup piece to the appliance. The appliance built this virtual backup from the incremental backup that was sent by our man. Once all the data files were restored from their virtual full backups, the recovery phase begins. Notice that the recovery phase goes directly into restoring archive logs. There are no incremental backups to restore, even though we sent an incremental backup. This is because the recovery appliance virtualized those incremental backups into the virtual fullbacks that were restored in the previous step. Also notice the piece handle name of the redo logs, of the archived redo logs. They begin with $RSCN. This is an indication that these were sent via real-time redo and not by RMAN backup sets. Once all the archive logs have been applied, the database is open. Now let's check for that record we inserted just before we crashed the database. Notice there are three records, with the last record having the timestamp of 1137.41 that we inserted earlier. This is zero data loss. This record was able to be recovered even though no backup was ever taken after the record was inserted into the database. Real-time redo provided zero data loss. I hope you found this demonstration to be educational and useful.